Hello guys and welcome back to another History and Politics Vault video with me Ryan Gladman. Today is episode 13 of the Cold War series GCC 9 to 1 Superpower Relations in the Cold War uh, History Course um, from Ed Excel, remember? Um, yesterday, uh, not was it yesterday, maybe, um, we looked at the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan and um, the SDI or Star Wars initiative by Ronald Reagan um, but we're going to go back, or a bit forward actually, into the 1980s and the impact of Gorbachev's new thinking. Um, but before we do that, hope you're all well. Um, I think it's quite a nice day out there today, so I hope you're getting outside if you can. Um, getting a bit more exercise, seeing some more people maybe, keeping your distance obviously. Uh, but I hope you're all well. In the meantime, John Lewis Gaddis, The Cold War. Um, once again, £10 on Amazon. It's a very good, insightful book, offering lots of different parts of analysis from both the Soviet Union side and the US side. Um, very impartial, Gaius is able to make an impartial judgement at the end and the analysis of the Cold War is very in-depth with lots of de detailed documents and documents that were later revealed to the public um, which weren't available at the time during the Cold War itself. So very, very good, um, good source of information if you're interested in that. But today we're going to look at Gorbachev's new thinking and its impact so before we looked at Gorbachev's new thinking and just what it was and what the proposed plan was, but we're going to look today at the actual impact of it in Eastern Europe. Um, and actually, we first did this new thinking and it was a sort of a, a reform in place by Gorbachev. Um, a lot of criticism criticism arose and eventually there was a, the downfall of Gorbachev because of this new thinking. Um, and because of the criticism and a lot of revolts that happened due to this new thinking, um, there was a breakup of the Soviet Union and it actually ended the whole Soviet Union itself, um, which meant that the Warsaw Pact collapsed as well. Um, but it wasn't because the Gorbachev's new thinking was bad, it was because it allowed countries to be too, um, to become autonomous once again and they were able to um, take back their countries and it meant that there was no need for the Soviet Union and actually the Soviet Union was seen as something bad now. Um, before it had been forced to be seen as something good because of the Brezhnev do Doctrine but in 1988 Gorbachev rejected the Brezhnev Doctrine and um, actually the year later he accepted that countries in the Warsaw Pact can make changes to their own countries, um, their own governments um, which actually became known as the Sinatra Doctrine, not the Gorbachev Doctrine Sinatra Doctrine because um, the song, there was a song released around the same time or before that actually, there was a song released before that by Frank Sinatra called My Way and it got quite linked to the idea of Gorbachev's new thinking, allowing countries to do it in their own way, to rule in their own way. So that's why it's called the Sinatra Doctrine. Um, but there was many random strikes and revolts happening in Eastern Europe because of this new thinking that allowed countries to relax um, restrictions and actually take hold of their countries once again. So in um, 1988 in Poland, there were many strikes throughout the country. And in 1989, um, a free trade union um, called Solidarity actually won elections. So there, the communist um, the communist group that was in power under the Soviet Union didn't win elections. And actually, uh, the guy called Mazowiecki became the first non-communist prime minister in Eastern Europe. Um, and it was the first time actually in Poland that they had a non-communist prime, prime minister throughout the whole of the Cold War. Um, similarly, in East Germany, where there was a massive battleground between the West and East, um, the US and the Soviet Union had been a battleground for the whole of the Cold War with, with the Berlin blockade and airlift and many other minor um, disputes and things like that and the Berlin Wall being created. In October 1989, Gorbachev, he visited East Germany and actually told him that Soviet troops would not put down any East German demonstrations um, to try and unify themselves with West Germany. So um, actually following on the 23rd of October, uh, 300,000 died protests around East Germany um, in Leipzig and on the 4th of November one million protests in East Berlin so gradually it was coming more from the east side and more central to the western side um, and actually the protests and demonstrations moved gradually towards the Berlin Wall and actually on the 9th of November so five days after the, the protests in East Berlin the Berlin Wall was pulled down um, and then in 1991 two years later Germany was re reunified as a country um, as one country, again, which had been under Nazi Germany during World War II and it got separated up into four zones, but now it's reu become reunified as one country. Um, we did talk about this in the last episode we do next time, 
Um, but that's just another part of the revolutions that happened in Eastern Europe. That's why I'm talking about it now. Um, Czechoslovakia, it was called the Velvet Revolution. It was a revolution that brought about the overthrow of the communist government there um, because there were huge demonstrations in, in November. And then um, because of these huge demonstrations in 1989, November, the communist govern government actually resigned and they said, no, we, we can't hold power anymore. There's too much opposi opposition. And on the 9th of December, um, a guy called Havel became the first non-communist Czech president since 1948. So three years after the war, that was the last time Czechoslovakia had a president that was not communist. And since then, it was a communist progression. Um, and this is the first time since then that there was a non-communist prime minister. And it was a massive symbol for the country to say, actually, we're taking back power. Um, and similarly, in other countries, as we talk through these revolutions, the pattern is that people are defying against the Soviet sort of control, um, not voting in these communist parties because they wanted to take back power and not become communist themselves anymore. Um, in Hungary, 1988, uh, Gorbachev accepted that Hungary could actually become a multi-party state. So it had become a, it was a, uni, a unitary party state, so one party in power and there was no other parties to challenge it. But actually Gorbachev allowed it to become a multi-party state. And there was democratic elections won by the Democratic Forum which was basically an alliance of non-communist groups in 1989. So because of these elections that were able to take place for the first time in many, many years, um, the groups of non-communist parties all come together as one group um, called the Democratic Forum was able to win power. And then on the 21st of October in that year, um, Hungary actually all opened its borders to East Germans and the West. So um, where Hungary is, it's just sort of um, south east of where East Germany is, and it opened its borders up to there, and it also allowed the West access into Hungary, which has been something that the Soviet Union, Union tried to block through its barrier, or its iron curtain if you like, as Winston Churchill called it, um, the barrier that they tried to put up in place between the east side and the west side, obviously they controlled the east side, or most of it, um, and they wanted this barrier to be put in place, but this, this is another symbol that actually this barrier is coming down. And then the Cold War was finally ending because of the collapse of the Soviet Union itself. Um, in Bulgaria, 1990, there was democratic elections and won by a renamed Communist Party. So actually, even though the Communist Party won these democratic elections, it was the first time these elections had become democratic. And the new Communist Party actually became less associated with the Soviet Union because of it. The Soviet Union was becoming less and less powerful, showing more weaknesses in internal disputes and how it was actually trying to govern itself because of Gorbachev's relaxation of restrictions and allowing Warsaw Pact countries to um, dominate their own politics and government. So actually this Communist Party in um, Bulgaria, even though it was elected in, um, actually it was more of a capitalist um, party in the sense that it wasn't so communist that it was associated with the Soviet Union. Um, Romania the last one in this, in this section is um, Romania 1989, on the 16th of December, there was secret police who fired um, open, openly, so fired guns on demonstrations. And then on the 21st, so five days later, there were huge crowds um, in Bucharest, and um, actually they made the president, um, I'm not sure how you say his name, I think it's Seyesescu, who fled um, to, to flee. But then he was later captured, actually. So he, even though he fled and he left his power, um, position of power, he was actually later captured anyway. And in 1990, so he, um, or about eight days later, actually, at the start of that year, the democratic elections, which were won by the National Salvation Front, um, which actually contained many non-communists once again. So these democratic elections were popping up all over Eastern Europe and they were voting in parties that were not communist, which showed a really big division and break away from the Soviet Union control it had been under, or many countries had been under for the past 40, 50 years. Um, and this, because of the goal of this new thinking, which is a great thing for many Eastern European countries, it was a massive break away from what the Soviet Union had been, um, had been like in the past decade or half decade uh, and half, half century. Um, and because it's such a break away, the Soviet Union actually collapsed in itself because it wasn't made to be so um, open to relaxing restrictions in these Eastern European countries. They were 
the Soviet Union was built on the policy of controlling countries and able to dominate them to form their own union. And once that union had been um, questioned and rebelled against and it became less and less of a union, then actually the Soviet Union itself would collapse. Um, so Gorbachev was a very progressive thinker um, and he was a, a progressive a leader of the Soviet Union. However, he actually led to the downfall of it, um, which many criticised within the Soviet Union, many criticised him on being the cause for the fall, um, which we'll look at in the last episode. So we'll look at the, the collapse of the Berlin Wall, the collapse of the Soviet Union, and then the end of the Warsaw Pact, and then ultimately this meant, or these three stages meant that the Cold War would end as, it, as we knew it to be like then. Um, there's been many questions and points raised that actually the Cold War hasn't ended, and we've just taken a new term with um, different countries, so in one sense China and the US, instead of the US and the Soviet Union, and with North Korea in that as well. But um, in, in the sense of this Cold War between the US and the Soviet Union, we'll look at the end in the next episode. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like down below, subscribe if you are new, um, leave a comment for any possible suggestions about new videos um, because as I said the last episode is next next time we will move on to something else. Um, I'll probably post videos up a little bit less every day, um, they're probably every two days and um, just hit videos here and there about different things but if you've got any ideas please let me know um, and I'll see you again soon. Thank you for watching.